Falcoholic patrons, what is up? Welcome to the Falcoholic Lives Falcons Q&A and Mailbag featuring you, the patrons. I know a lot of people are uh, remote today. I know we had a couple, uh, several questions sent in early. For those of you joining us, welcome in. Uh, we got some wonderful guests uh, joining us today. First of all, obviously, you see him, Adnan Ikic, at Say Which Way, uh, Adnan welcome in uh missed you on wednesday we i uh, made sure to make sure uh to blame you for all of the wrong predictions in the the season predictions episode now uh you're here i guess you could defend yourself but uh how, how are you doing that's very fair I, I don't know defending myself two days later nobody really cares anymore yeah so you know i, I mean that's what i get though that's what i get for <laughs> for missing that show in particular but you know hanging out with I'm family all- i mean geez Oh, it's uh, it, it's rough out here. You know, can't be, can't be missing these June shows. You never know what you'll miss out on. <laughs> exactly. Um, so much, so much content. Yeah, we're just missing. Yeah, um, yeah, I'm doing well. You know, it's a NBA free agency is about to start, so you know, looking forward to that and looking forward to a a, a long weekend with uh with the fourth coming up on on Tuesday. So, you know, hopefully, hopefully everyone has a, a very a very fun and safe holiday weekend out here. Yes, I, I saw that there was a short going around where the where the you know fireworks went off and then it lit the entire trunk full of fireworks and then it blew up the car. Um, so don't do that this weekend, ladies and gentlemen. Um, we don't and, need uh, a JPP situation. <laughs> yeah, we don't you know, need a JPP situation. <laughs> Please, patrons, don't get into a JPP situation, but also joining us today, Jordan Watkins, once again, at big fellow 75 on the Twitters, Jordan, thanks for coming on. How you doing? No, I'm doing wonderful. Uh, happy. I got to, you know, take some time away from, uh, I'm over here actually in the NBC sports studios right now in the Bay area. Uh, got a chance to take, you know, some time away so I can talk to Falcons football. So I'm, I'm all good. You know me, Kevin, I, whenever I get to talk football, I'm happy. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, I know in particular, we did a, I know we have an offensive line question today, so you'll get to, to really uh, flex your Uh-oh. offensive line muscles, but no, it's not, it's not too bad, but uh, yeah, I know we had, okay. uh, yeah, it's, it's not a bad one. Uh, it's, it's depth question, that sort of thing. So um, yeah, guys, appreciate everyone for sending in all the questions. We'll get to those. If you're here live, feel free to pop your questions in the chat. We'll get to as many of them as we can. Um, and, you know, since it's like late June, there's not a whole lot going on. We'll probably go. We'll go until we run out of questions. You know, um, it might be, you know, might be a little shorter this time because I, I understand, guys. I mean, so so I know I, I appreciate uh, Solaire for giving us a curveball question, um, but <laughs> I know there's not necessarily a ton out there. So I appreciate everyone who has sent stuff in. But uh, yeah, we just appreciate you guys for hanging out with us and supporting the show. And on that note, I did want to give a couple of quick updates before we dive into Hey folks, just wanted to take a minute to bring you a word from our sponsor, betonline.ag, your number one source for all your sports betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Feeling overly confident in the Falcons, perhaps, or other NFL futures? You can bet on Atlanta or other teams to win their divisions right now before before the rest of the league catches up. To that hype train, BetOnline is your sports intel headquarters this season as they've got you covered for all your insider sports wagering needs. BetOnline is the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info, including live betting options and your favorite casino and card card games you can play right from your home. So head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Be sure to use our promo code BELIEVE, that's B-L-E-A-V, to receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit, bet online where the game starts. Uh, first of all, the Patron Fantasy Leagues, we're going to start forming those in July, and those are going to come together. Uh, so all you have to do, once again, to be in those Patron Fantasy Leagues, I will do uh, a form to fill out to let just to let me know that you're interested and I'll tabulate all that. And, you know, if we need two or three again or four even this year maybe um, – that's cool. Uh, to be eligible to be in the leagues, you need to make sure you have an active Patreon and you need to maintain your Patreon status throughout the season or else you're not going to be eligible for uh, any of the prizes, uh, any of that stuff, which we're still in progress on. So, But uh, that 
that's the rules basically it's the same as last year but just wanted to give everyone a heads up on that to look forward to some some uh, announcements there and then a cool announcement that we're going to be uh delivering here for the first time is that we're going to have our first live podcast event during training camp this year uh we are working with sweetwater brewery and taproom in atlanta they uh will be hosting we're still uh ironing out the finer details it'll either be a live taping or just sort of a hangout meet and greet um right now it's looking like that will probably be the evening of friday july 28th uh it's you know still being ironed out the finer details but we wanted to let you guys know first uh so, you know, I know some of you may want to pop over there. I know a lot of you already live in Atlanta, so that should be pretty easy. But, um, yeah, so we're looking forward to that. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. It'll be nice to meet uh, some folks in person. And it'll be during training camp, so I know everyone will be excited uh, to get the scoop on everything that's going on there. So, um, yeah. That would happen just after kind of, well, kind of, I, I leave from Atlanta. Yeah, that we finally get together, you know, right immediately after Jordan leaves. So, uh, sorry about right. that, Jordan. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, right. we are looking forward to it. Work. Yeah, no, we, we would never, we would never leave Jordan out of it. But um, yeah, guys, uh, more details, uh, finer details, specific date, time, official announcement will come soon. But uh, definitely start. Uh, getting the wheels turning if you're interested in getting there because we'd love to meet you guys and um i'm seeing if we can do some sort of like vip experience for the patrons like if we record the show there maybe we can get some like tables cordoned off like at the front for the patrons that show up um but you know i don't have the that clear of details on it yet but if i can do stuff like that i'd like to to give you guys a little exclusive stuff there um but yeah appreciate everyone uh for their support and we hope to see you guys there so all right, let's let's dive in. Uh, we'll start with a zany one because uh, I I found this one pretty funny uh, from from Solaire on Patreon. Um, <laughs> Solaire, I'm just cracking up reading this. Okay, so amongst all players and coaches who have ever played for the Falcons, which player or coach would be your champion in a sumo wrestling tournament if they all competed against each other? So it could be players or coaches, and it's a sumo wrestling tournament. So it's a little bit, you know, it, it, there's there's a That's different set of skills. Fun, Either that or an, maybe a nose tackle. Um, but, yeah, yeah I'm mean, curious. You know, I, mean, I know this is a lot of pressure, but I need a, a firm answer from, from each of you. But uh, Adnan, I know you got some thoughts. Go ahead. That's um, <laughs> it's a tough one. Okay, so here's my here's my reasoning here. So I'm thinking it's going to be one of those like O linemen, you know, one of those. You know, I, I mean, you know, you have you have the weight, you have the weight advantage, you have the mass advantage there, and for some reason, I'm thinking it'll be one of those guys who played, you know, in, in the 70s, 80s, you, you know, back when back when things were a bit more rugged. So I am probably going to go with Jeff Van Noten. Yeah, I think it's a good one. I, I think that that's definitely up there for sure. I was, yeah. Jordan, did you have any, any names that immediately came to mind players or coaches? Uh, oh, right, right away. This was pretty easy for me. Cause I'm thinking, you know, lower, not super low, but lower center of gravity and a big dude who's still kind of quick. You remember Grady Jackson? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's the first thought that came to me. I, I, I even like, looked it up real quick. Like six, two, about three fifty. Mm -hmm. uh yeah that that would be my takes easily for for this yeah i think that that's a good one i was thinking like harvey Dahl, maybe uh on the offensive side maybe uh i, I also was just thinking like paul solii he kind of feels like a sumo wrestler to me a little bit um so i, I think paul solii would be good there and then for coaches i had brian cox uh, <laughs> I mean, Brian Cox is a more player too. Yeah, yeah. I, I think you know. I know Dan Quinn would give it his all, but he's not getting past Brian Cox. Uh, so, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like Dan uh, Quinn would give yeah, effort, I mean, but yeah. No, but absolutely. Just don't let Dan Reeves participate. <laughs> absolutely not. Yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say, like, I guess coach wise, like for me, because I know he was my. Uh, so he was my D-line coach when I was there for rookie minicamp, but also he recruited me when he was the D-line coach of Florida. Uh, you know, so Brian Young would, mm -hmm. would be my pick on the coaching side for that. Yeah, yeah. 
I think that's a good one too. Definitely like former players, defensive line coaches, offensive line coaches. That's probably where you, where you look there. But yeah, I thought Todd McClure too, maybe a little bit of a sleeper because he's also uh, that low center of gravity. Um, and he's just nasty. Also, yeah. I mean, there's also those, you know, tackles who have that, have that hand placement technique. So, you know, maybe someone like a Mike Ken, mm-hmm. um, you know, there's, I don't know, I feel like Jake Matthews would, probably be a, a nice little dark horse in that as well yeah yeah think so. Yeah, because it's all about it's all about the footwork and hand placement too it's mm-hmm. not just all right like you know biggest guy i don't, yeah. I don't know i feel like I feel like there's an art to sumo wrestling there is for sure like the the professionals Absolutely. like you have to be able to like have the mass to hold up but also you have to maintain enough agility and the positioning uh to be able to get it done so uh is you know it's, it's more complicated than it looks. So I think, you know, this is a good question here from, from Solaire. Um, mm. All right. Next question we have got uh, from M, uh, who I, I don't remember. <laughs> it just says M. I, I forget who that is. But uh, M, thank you. <laughs> he says, busy house hunting today. Oh, that sounds fun. Uh, so can't make it. Uh, my question, what position battle are you most looking forward to? This is a good one. Um, Jordan, I'll let you take the first crack at it. Which which group are you most excited to watch in, in this year's camp? Yeah, I think the thing for me, and I, I want to say I might have said it before, but I look at the nickel spot. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, obviously the brought in, they signed Mike Hugh in uh, free agency, which I, I think, and everyone probably believes for the most part, he has that front running spot there. But then when you go and draft Clark Phillips, and I mean, Kevin, you remember my reaction. When I saw that they, they drafted Clark Club, uh, how excited I was. Uh, I'm really excited. I'm, I'm really looking forward to that battle position. And again, I think the thing for me, the most fun part of all of this, you're a Falcons fan. You've been at, you've been asking, begging, pleading for depth at certain defensive positions for so long. And so no matter who wins that spot, that starting nickel spot, you have depth there. But I really am looking forward to see who's going to win that out. Yeah, no, that's a great one. Um, I definitely am also interested in that. And, like, we've heard more that, like, maybe D. Alford really is, like, a much stronger competitor. Like, I think we all thought he had a shot, but maybe even the favorite at this point, like, the actual starter at this point, maybe even over Mike Hughes. And then, of course, Clark Phillips, sort of the wild card in that group. Um, So, yeah, I agree with you there. That's definitely a good one. Uh, Adnan, what do you think? uh, Um, what What are you watching? I mean, I think nickel is a great answer. Um, and just for diversity purposes, I'm, I'm not going to – I mean, I echo it. I echo the sentiment for sure. Nickel is going to be a hell of a, a competition to watch. Uh, just for diversity purposes, I'm going to go with a wide receiver. And, I mean, it feels like it every single year. The wide receiver battle is always really heated. Uh, it's always really fun. I think uh, they have the first four spots already locked in as to who it's going to be with Drake London, Scotty Miller, Matt Collins, Kadero Lodge. But then after that, I think there's up to maybe a couple more uh, spots that are up for grabs. You know, Frank Darby is still hanging around. Uh, you have you have my guy Penny Hart from uh, from Georgia State. You know, go Panthers. Uh, JJ Arcega Whiteside is a former premium draft selection who was absolute monster in college uh and you know xavier malone uh in there as well so it's gonna be it's gonna be really it's gonna be a fun interesting battle just like just like it is every year um you know and we've had some we've had some fun we've we've had some fun climaxes to some of these wide receiver battles in the past remember alameda zacchaeus uh winning winning the undrafted battle and going on to have a pretty good career in the NFL so far. Yeah. Um, you, you know, we remember, we remember last season, uh, Jared Bernhardt uh, successfully going from lacrosse to the NFL and winning a roster spot. So I'm, uh, I'm really looking for plus, you know, there could be, you know, possibly another signing, another couple signings before camp going into camp. You never know. This isn't anything exclusive. Like I, I don't have any inside sources, but you never know that there's always some signing that could happen as well. Um, so can't wait to see how that's going to shake out. Yeah, no, that's a good one too. Um, I think those two for sure, like wide receiver probably is my number one. Um, just because it really is wide open. Like you said, like 
I I think Kadero Hodge is pretty safe. And like, yeah, if you guys haven't listened to it, I just did the wide receiver and tight end training camp uh, preview. So that's up on the feed too, if you haven't seen that yet. Um, getting into this very topic, but yeah, I mean, I I sort of think Kadero Hodge is probably safe, but behind him, it's completely wide open. Like they could keep any two of these guys that you listed out. Like, um, and you know, I like Zay Malone, and and he has a nickname now. Apparently, it's Zay. So you know, when when Arthur Smith puts a nickname on somebody, that typically means good things. You know, we got Ryan Newsel <laughs> Newsflash. He made the team, so. You know, I'm just saying, you keep an eye on What's that Felipe one. What's Felipe nickname? Because, you know, he probably has many at this point, if that's if that's the criteria. Right, yeah. How many nicknames do you have? Uh, or is it does the nickname stay the same? I, I don't know. That We have to do more We have to do more uh, intrepid reporting to figure that one out. That, that might be sort of a sleeper way to determine who's going to make this roster. But um, in the interest of talking about other positions, uh, I think actually like linebacker behind um, Caden mm-hmm. Ellis and Troy Anderson – I think is pretty wide open. Um, Michael Walker, you would think would be the favorite, but is he in the doghouse with this staff? Um, hard, kind of hard to say. So there's a lot of guys there. Dorian Etheridge apparently has been really flashing again. He's healthy after missing a lot of time last year. Nate Landman was a UDFA from last year's camp that ended up making it. Um, and then they brought in a couple of special teams veterans and Andre Smith Jr. and Tate Davis. So those guys are going to be factors. And then UDFA Mike Jones Jr. So, really wide open. Like I, I think they they'll probably keep, you know, at least two more linebackers, at least four, I would think maybe five. So there's definitely opportunity for those guys. Uh, and I think it's pretty wide open, but um, that one, I think is sort of a under the radar uh, battle to watch is, is how those linebackers perform. But Dorian Etheridge, you know, elite uh, preseason player. So he, if, if, if past history is any indication, he's probably going to get like 30 tackles in one game and just seal that battle uh, for, for, for all, eternity uh with his elite performance but um that was a good one though thank you m and we got nico uh with his question so which non-division game do you want to win the most this season if you have a preference for him uh it's jags uh they would like to get that back-to-back dub in london or colts uh for what they did to matt ryan i assume uh, so, uh, not I'll let you get the first crack at this one. What do you, uh, which which non divisional game is most important to you? Man, this is actually a really good one. Um, part of me really wants to win that Green Bay game in week two, uh, because I don't. I'm I, I'm. I sound like such a Jordan Love hater at this point for all <laughs> I've said on, on the show leading up, but I, I don't. I don't get the infatuation. I, I don't get it. And, you know, of course, there's going to be those comparisons between Love and Ritter, both being guys who haven't really started very much. But I don't get it. Like, Jordan Love has been given this free pass at this point because, you know, he was a first-round pick previously. But I don't see it with him. Um, and I've hated on him and the Packers way too much for him to be good this year. So I, I would definitely like to win that week two game against the Packers. It's going to be a home game. You know, Green Bay fans are, you know, always, always very annoying. Legacy fan base. I'm sure there's going to be a, a lot of them at the, at the bends in that, in that game. So uh, let's, let's hopefully win that game and go to two and zero. Yeah. I think that's a good, a good one actually, because I, I do think that that'll be a game for the Falcons to potentially like, really get on the map like if they whoop up on the panther or on the on the panthers and the packers and start 2 and 0 like people will probably start ch- changing their tune a little bit um you know but yes i agree like I, it's not really about jordan love it's just sort of like why he's getting the shine for really medi- like extremely mid or worse play over his like four seasons in the NFL and and Ritter's like well, how could they how dare you start Desmond Ritter that that annoys me but Honestly, it's not really Jordan Love's fault I have, that's happening. I have nothing so. against Jordan yeah. Love, like nothing at all. But it's just <laughs> I hate having Jordan Love shoved down my throat. Like I, I hate <laughs> to have to watch watch the Packers six times on national television. I yeah. still can't get over that. Like that. No, sure, if they had Rodgers, sure. Like yeah, I get it. But it's like I'm not trying to watch. You know, I, I don't know. I I think like their brand of football isn't even like that attractive. Like, yeah. you know, for the girls to really enjoy. No, I I agree. I, I think that team is really overrated, uh, honestly. 
Um, so we'll see. But curious, Jordan, wh- which game do you think is uh, the most important non-division? Most important, I guess the way I put this too is like the, the ones I, the one I want to win the most. Uh, I have two answers. So the first one, and as soon as I say it, people are going to look down and schedule like, what? We don't play them. But I'm speaking this into existence in terms of a postseason matchup. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. The 49ers. Like, I, I, I want to see them in the playoffs. Obviously, it made me so happy if we get to meet up with Kyle Shanahan and knock them out. Like, that that would mean so much to you. But no, in, in reality, uh, with what we have actually in regular season, I look at week 13, and it's kind of funny. And then you talk about Jordan Love. Well, I'm talking about a person that he's, he's uh, trying to replace, Aaron Rodgers, the New York Jets. I think that, again, you look at what the hype is coming into the season – for the Jets, everyone all of a sudden, you know, obviously they have a great defense. They have these weapons. Now Aaron Rodgers is there. They are now this, this like Super Bowl contender darling in so many people's eyes. And so I think that for the Falcons, especially later on in the year, because that's when I think people really kind of start to separate. Okay, who's the contender? Who's the pretender? If they could go and play the Jets and beat them and, and, and you know, like really hand it to them, which I really think that there's a possible they can do so. Uh, that would really mean a lot. And again, like to your point, like of beating the Packers early in the season to make that mark, to do it again later in the season to a team like the Jets, again, New York, that big media market, that would really mean a lot to uh, what I think we all think the Falcons are building. Yeah, that's a great one too, because that is probably going to be a game where the Falcons are not going to be thought highly of. I mean, I guess by that time we'll know if this whole Aaron Rodgers thing has worked or not. Uh, right. So maybe it's all falling apart, you know, terribly, but um, maybe that defense is still good. What's that? Maybe he's hosting Jeopardy by then. Maybe. You know? Yeah. He just rides off into the <laughs> sunset, you know, ayahuasca in hand and uh, he's heading back to the, uh, the psychedelics conference. But um, yeah, it, you know, I, I agree. Like I would love I just love beating Aaron Rodgers. Like, I don't know. The guys always kind of rub me the wrong way, you know? Like, I, 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 like, respect the player, but he's just, like, one of those guys that's just, like, I just never liked him. <laughs> like, I don't know what to say. <laughs> maybe I'm just a hater because um, I never liked Tom Brady either. So maybe I'm just a hater of, of really good quarterbacks. But, um, yeah, it, it could be that. Uh, but that that's a great one. I'm torn here with mine between – the Lions and the Bears. I think the Lions one is more important, though. The Bears, I just want to beat because their fans are getting, like, super obnoxious. Um, which is, like, you're going to be better. Like, that's fine. But then, like, you know, we predicted... I think we predicted that... I predicted the Falcons are going to beat the Bears. And I was like, well, their run defense is really bad. So that's why I think... And they had, we have fans commenting on the video, like, oh, this is, like, a super homer take. The Bears are going to be great. It's like, you, were th- you won three games last year. You guys need to relax, okay? But... It, <laughs> It's just, honestly, though, it's just not that important to beat the Bears. So maybe that's the most insulting thing I can say of all. So um, I, I'm going to go with the Lions because I actually think the Lions and the Falcons are very similar in terms of where the team is. Everyone's all hot and bothered about the Lions uh, because of what they did last year. But I honestly think the Lions and the Falcons like are actually pretty much in the same exact place in terms of where the team is. Like, they're both sort of building towards being a playoff contender for the first time in a long time. Um, So, and I do have the, you know, Falcons losing to the Lions in week three. I think it'll be a good game. But if they could pull off that win and and beat, like, another sort of media darling, which is weird to say the Lions are a media darling because they've really never been that until just this season where it seems like they're just the trendy team that everyone's picking. Um, And I honestly... Right, yeah. So... And, I mean, I don't blame... Dan yeah. Campbell, I, I'm a Dan he's Campbell fun. guy. He's fun. He's very fun. Yeah, that's a yeah. football guy right there. I got, yes. I got to respect him. I have no choice. Yeah. So, yeah. So it's like I don't find them like onerous like I do some of these teams, but I think it would be an important game like to really show that the fact it's like, oh, you think the Lions are going to be this trendy like sort of rising star team this year? Maybe it's actually the Falcons that are going to be that team, and obviously beating the Lions. Uh, would go a long way towards doing that. And I think the Falcons are better equipped than people think to do that because it's a really bad run defense last year. So uh, it, it could, you know, I think honestly the Falcons are probably going to victimize teams with bad run defenses this year uh, in a way that they even didn't do last year, like even at a higher level. So that's my They even did it with good, good run defense. <laughs> they did sometimes, yeah. You have to look at that 49ers game. <laughs> 
They just beat up on those guys. It's crazy. That was, was a great game. game. That was the best game of the year, probably. Yes. <laughs> oh, trust me. Like for me out here in the Bay Area, yeah, that yeah. was the best game of the year. <laughs> yeah, for sure. That was a great one. So yeah, I, I agree with you too, though. If we can get that rematch and, and spank the 49ers in the playoffs, that that would be uh, pretty hype. But yeah. I'd, I'd have immunity out here for so long. I do love it. <laughs> there's a, there's a meta My reason for this too. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah. Was, my girlfriend wouldn't be happy with me, but she'd have to deal with this. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's one of, just one of those things, right? So, okay, we <laughs> <Exactly>. got <laughs> we got we got George Costanza. What's up, George? Uh, welcome in, buddy. Uh, he says, "How big of a step forward do we need to see from Troy Anderson and UCF legend Richie Grant in order to truly push for a Super Bowl berth? Where do you think they will be in their development this season?" It's a great question. Um, yeah. Well, I'll, I'll start with this one. Um, Troy Anderson, I I mean, to make a Super Bowl, they need to, like, take a huge step. If we're just talking about, like, playoffs, um, I do think, like, I do think, George, you picked out two of, like, sort of the linchpin guys that are, like, the really, like, these are the guys that could determine whether it's a great season, a good season, or just, like, sort of an average season. Because I think they're really depending on Troy Anderson um, being a starter and how well he plays can sort of determine how the defense as a whole sort of looks because he's going to be in the middle of that unit next to Caden Ellis, who I think will be great. Um, and I think is super underrated, but if Troy Anderson could also be great, I think it lifts the whole defense a lot, but I think all he needs to be this year is like average to above average for them to be a good defense. Um, if he could be better than that, that'd be great. And with Richie Grant, I think he just needs to like take another step to being above average, where I think he definitely became an average starter last year, had his ups and downs, which is pretty typical. But I think he really needs to take that next step to being above average next to a great player in Jesse Bates and just like let him be who he is, be that aggressive safety. Um, you know, don't – and Jesse Bates can cover up the mistakes, but let Richie Grant go try to make some plays because that's what he did so well in his legendary UCF career. But uh, – yeah, Jordan, what what do you think about those two guys? Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I feel like first off, this is a perfect question for me to end on because I got to get back to work after this. Mm-hmm. But first, uh, George, I love the question for two different things. First off, we're talking Super Bowl yeah. already. Like that, that, that. <laughs> I love, I love this question just off that alone. Yeah, leave it but to you, Stanza, to bring up the Super Bowl. <laughs> hey, look, I mean, you, you know me, I. Look, I'm a person, I guess I sometimes I get overly optimistic. Well, not even overly optimistic. It, it, it's, I get focused, especially when you talk about a team game and things like this. Like, I did the same thing when I was at Stanford. Yeah, you want to focus and put your sights on the biggest goal possible. You know, and so I, I love that George is already thinking the Super Bowl. I'm like, yeah, George, I'm with you. Um, but then secondly, why I love this question is because with those two players, and Kevin, you already kind of hit it on the hit on the two. So much of their growth and their development is around other people, and those other people we know are kind of staples. So what what do I mean by that? So if you look at Troy Anderson, again, he is such a similar athlete and maybe potentially player as the Caden Ellis. He can learn from Caden Ellis, and it makes it so much easier for him coming into the system. And also, of course, we have Caden Ellis' defensive coordinator coming in, Ryan Nielsen. So that it makes it so much easier for, for him to try to figure things out, work things out, you know, whether it's the uh, some of the the, the, the term, the, the verbiage that's in the defense, maybe some of the read, maybe it's the blitz. Like, hey, you know what, Troy, you go blitz because Ryan, I mean, uh, Caden's going to cover this up after. You know, uh, he, he has you. And then also the other part that we talked about with Richie Grant, you have one of the biggest uh, Mr. Queens, if you will, one of the biggest and best Mr. Queens in, in secondary now in terms of Jesse Bates. So think about what that means for you as a, if you're the, now you're the strong safety, you're that box safety. You can play a little bit more free because you know there's somebody behind you that you can trust to fix and clean up so many of your mistakes. So, you know, the thing for me is it's not, I don't even look at it as, what do those two players have to do? It's how great of a situation are they in now that they have people to make up for their mistakes so they can play more freely. That's the one thing you always want to see from young players. It's not necessarily the, the growth. It's just be free, play free. Don't worry about making those, those mistakes. 
because now the Falcons, which we again we haven't seen in a while, they have people there that can make up for those mistakes if if they ever happen. And yeah. I think that's the best part about the Yeah, absolutely. That great takes there. Jordan, I know you gotta get back to it, but I appreciate you making the yep. time tonight, man. He is Big Fella seventy five on Twitter. Uh so have a great night, enjoy the game, and uh, we'll talk to you next time. Yeah, thanks again for having me. I'll have a good one. Yep, have a good one, man. All right, Adnan, same question to you. Uh, what do you think we need to see from Troy Anderson and Richie Grant this year to get this team to the Super Bowl? And, you know, maybe the playoffs would be nice too. Well, I <laughs> I would like to reiterate that I, I do appreciate George's optimism, um, you know, as – as we are used to at this point, um, it's, you know, it, it is, it is a great question. I mean, and I mean, you know, why not? Us? Am I right? You know, who, who knows, who knows what could happen? You know, we didn't see 2016 coming either. Um, <laughs> yeah. But I, I don't think it would be too far fetched to say that by the end of the season, that these could be, possibly the two most important players on this defense not i'm not saying they're going to be the best players like you know we know we know jesse bates is there we know aj terrell is there but you know that just sort of highlights the importance a little bit in that you know guys like grady jarrett you know terrell bates um you know veterans like calais campbell someone like Hayden ellis you know what you'll get with them you know that they're you know, more than likely going to show up. They're going to show out. These two guys are the big question marks. Uh, Troy Anderson, I'm I'm with you on it uh, about if Troy Anderson just has, you know, an average season, then he'll be right where he needs to be within his development because he came out as a very raw prospect last year. And we knew, we said it from the start. We said it from, from the very beginning of when he was drafted. Don't expect Troy Anderson to make a massive impact in year one you know he'll be he'll be a solid special teams contributor but don't expect him to to come in and just you know light the world on fire uh, on defense because that was you know he wasn't really expected to do that and I'm still I'm seeing people have these ridiculous takes of oh Troy Anderson's a bust Troy Anderson like you, you know he he didn't live up to expectations Year one, these were the expectations. Year two, I, I think he'll be well ahead in his development, and I'll be very, uh, I'll be very happy and very satisfied if we can see him as you know a, an average, a league average linebacker because we know there's so much there's so much more left for him to get to, and if he's average, that means he'll have taken that that next step into being a solid contributor on defense. Now, Richie Grant, on the other hand, I am I need more from Richie Grant. Like, at this point, I feel like Richie Grant has been given everything he could ask for uh, to be a very good safety uh, in the NFL. He was, you know, we know about the struggles in year one. Uh, he didn't really, he didn't get the playbook down, which, I mean, that's it's a little unacceptable uh, for anyone. But, you know, he was given his sort of redshirt year a little bit in year one. Last year, he, you know, he was a, a solid contributor last season. I need I need a big step for Merchie Grant this year. And I know that both Grant and Anderson were both, you know, second-round picks. But Grant, for one, he's going to year three. For two, Richie Grant was a higher second-round pick. Richie Grant was taken, what, with the 40th pick in yeah, the NFL so. draft? Yeah, the Pelicans passed on Creed Humphrey, who, you know, Creed Humphrey was on their board. We have talked, we've talked to some people uh, within within the organization who who have, and, and we know for a fact that there were some people that wanted Creed Humphrey. They, some people and, were pounding the table for him, yeah. Yeah, some people were very much pounding the table for Creed Humphrey. The team decided to go with Richie Grant, okay. This year, I need him to be, you know, I'm not saying I need him to be elite, but I need him to be well above average. I need him to be a very, I need him to be a, a very good starter at safety for the Falcons. He was given Jesse Bates. Jesse Bates, you know, he's going to be there. You're given a, a pro bowler, a pro bowler next to you at the position next to you. 
to help clean up some mistakes to the point where Richie Grant, you can be, you can be aggressive. You can, you, you know, and Ryan Nielsen will want that as well. Ryan Nielsen yeah. will value that as well. Uh, I need, I need Richie Grant to, to be more than what he has been so far. But to answer the question of, you know, he, to make a Super Bowl, we'll, we'll need quantum leaps from both of these guys. And we'll yeah. need, for a Super Bowl, you'll need Richie Grant to be elite. You'll need Troy Anderson to be, you know, close to a leader. Like, you'll need Troy Anderson to make a sort of second-year leap that's not unprecedented for linebackers, but the sort of a leap that's like, all right, this dude is like, you know, this dude is going to be a pro bowler for, for many years to come. Uh, you you need that level of play. I mean, I I don't I, I don't think it'll happen, <laughs> but um, but definitely I think I think the pressure is very much on Richie Grant as it should be. You know, it comes with the territory, and you know I, I need I need both of these guys to take those next steps. But I'm looking and I have greater expectations of Richie Grant than I do of Troy Anderson. Yeah, yeah, me too. And I, I think it's like they they've sort of they've really given Grant the, the opportunity, like made it completely open for him to be the starter and really put a lot of faith and trust in him. And I think that does show that they believe that he can take that step and they obviously really like him. I obviously really like him UCF legend. So, um, you know, he's the one I think they're depending on more, but I think with Troy Anderson, like I just, I, just, I never want to bet against Troy Anderson because he, he is that one of one athlete and he is a guy that only played linebacker for a couple of years. So getting him NFL coaching, playing a consistent position. Um, yeah, Nico, you know, I think that's pretty on point. Like we need Troy Anderson to have a similar trajectory to Foye Aluakun, who came in and struggled initially. And then in his second and third year became a starter. It was, and it was really good and got paid, you know, good for him. Um, and I, I do think that, that Anderson has that potential to, to do something similar to that. Um, and I think Trey Anderson could be better, obviously, too, because of his size, athleticism, all that. Um, and I think that they're they're probably going to simplify things for Troy this year and not ask him to play as much zone coverage, not ask him to do a lot of complicated stuff, and really just let him go make some tackles, play some man, and, and blitz a lot. Um, I think blitzing the linebackers is going to be a core part of this defense. Um, we could see both linebackers blitzing on some plays because they have two really good blitzers. Like Kate Nellis had what seven sacks last year as a blitzer. Uh, and, and Trey Anderson, that was one of his best parts of his game was his pass rush. So I think that, uh, they're, they're going to make things easier for Troy. And I think really for him, he just needs to get better at the finer points of linebacker. And the, the way you do that is to play and they're going to have him play. But yeah, to make the Super Bowl, like you're saying, George, like you would, you probably would need a quantum leap from Troy Anderson. And you probably would need a big leap for Richie Grant. Um, because, you know, I think that the secret to this team getting far in the playoffs is that the defense becomes like good because I think the offense will be good enough. Um, probably to to get to the playoffs but I think if the defense isn't good enough like I don't know if this will be a high scoring week to week offense like this is probably not going to be a 30 plus points per game type of offense but you know 25 26 27 points per game you know that I think is in play they scored 21 and a half per game last year which was 15th so you know I think if they could get up to that 25 points per game level I think they'll they'll comfortably be in the ranking of the playoffs and I think if they can get you know, the defense better, uh, like, it, it, you know, defense 20 points a game or so, um, they'll be in a much better shape to make that playoff run. But um, I think you picked out two of the most important players for that transformation on the defensive side of the football. Um, but particularly early in the season, I think, like, the offense is probably going to have to shoulder the load because I think the defense is going to take time to gel. But I think by late in the season, the defense will really be an asset for this team. So we'll see how it all comes together. But I do think the defense as a whole has a really good chance of, of being a very impactful, much more impactful than it has been in years past and something that's not going to hold the team back uh, like it has a lot in past years. So, um, yeah, 
I believe that's all the questions. Um, so a little bit of an early finish today, but I do appreciate everyone for hanging out, everyone for sending them in. I know it's a little bit of a slower season. So uh, we'll we'll just go ahead and wrap up here. I uh, appreciate Jordan Watkins. He's at Big75 Fella on Twitter uh, for his time. Also appreciate Adnan joining us today. Anything else you'd like to plug before we take off, Adnan? Um, no, not really. Just check out alcoholic.com. Um, we're still, you know, we're still grinding away at the, uh, at the off season. It's difficult for everyone. I see NFL.com, you know, on social media is making these posts like flipping videos and being like, Oh, this is what it would look like if Joe <laughs> if they were Burrow left-handed. Left -handed. <laughs> or like if, the, if Josh Allen threw left-handed, like, it, um, you know, it's, I, I get it, guys. Like, you know, the the content has to go. You know, the content has to be published. But you know, we're 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 close to training camp for everyone. Um, we're we're another what thirty two days, you know, before training camp officially. Um, so, you know, I'll be there officially for the first I don't know, like six or so days of camp. Um, and you know, that's that's locked in at this point. And I know you'll be there as well. So. You know, it's uh, it's a difficult time for everyone. And, you know, to answer your question, George, I have my trusty ginger ale. You know, it's, uh, <laughs> uh, it's <important>. Seagram's. Yeah. <laughs> Seagram's, you know, yeah. I mean, uh, I like Canada Dry, too. I, I don't discriminate in, in ginger ale, um, in ginger ale brands. So that's that's my soda of choice. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, I go for like ginger beer because I like way more like ginger flavor. And that I have, there's one up here, the Ithaca ginger beer, which is just like so gingery. Like it literally clears out your sinuses and I, I love it, but it's definitely like a different drink at that point. Like it's just really intense. And yeah, the most gingery drink I remember, it was the ginger ale bold. Yeah. So I, I think I may have drank one on the show one time, mm -hmm. but it's like, like it's so much ginger. Like it's yeah. to the point where it will bite you. Like, oh if, yeah, yeah. If you like breathe in like the wrong way as you're drinking it, you will cough, and you yeah. will cough like, a lot. Like me and my friends have had this running joke that yeah, the reason why we didn't get COVID is because we drank the the ginger ale ginger bold. bold. Yeah, it cleared out the sinuses for you. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, it, it. Destroyed everything. It destroyed every living organism. Like what within, <laughs> you know, going down to the stomach. Yep. Yeah. So I mean, hey. Don't don't you don't fight it right. You just accept it and move on. So uh, ginger ale bold, ginger ale bold, you know ginger beer, all good stuff, guys. Uh, but yeah, appreciate all you guys for hanging out with us, patrons. Once again, thank you so much. Uh, we hope to see everyone. Uh, if you're in the Atlanta area or if you're planning to come to training camp, we hope to see you at Sweetwater Brewing, the tap room. Uh, on, I think it will be July 28th. We're still working that out. Probably like 6 p.m. ish. Um, and, you know, again, we'll see if it's going to be a live taping thing, if I can get the logistics of that sorted out. Or maybe it'll just be sort of a meet and greet hangout. But I'd like to be able to maybe have like a VIP section for patrons or something. But um, we're still working on the details, but I did want to share that with you guys first. Um, and, of course, uh, we'll get you updates on the Fantasy League as they come. So, again, I'm Kevin Knight at Falcoholic. Kevin, follow the show at Falcoholic Live. If you're not yet a patron, you're listening to this after the fact, you can join the Patreon, patreon.com slash Falcoholic Live for those exclusive perks. Uh, like, subscribe, leave that five-star review on your podcast platform of choice. And, uh, yeah, guys, thank you so much. Today's show, as always, brought to you by Bet Online, And uh, we will talk to you on Wednesday for the next Falcoholic Live show. Uh, topic TBD. But Eric had a good idea, Adnan, that we could do the tortured fan base rankings. So maybe we'll do that. Nice, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of arguments about, you know, who who is the most tortured fan base. So um, that could be a good one. It could be good, good off-season content. So maybe we'll do that. But stay tuned for that, guys. And, again, thank you so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time on the Falcoholic Live. Have a great day, folks.